Hello everyone, welcome to this edition of Viral. I'm your host as always, Kendra Dix here, joining the conversation as we talk about Megan Thee Stallion set the record straight. Now there's been so many reports, rumors are going around about Megan Thee Stallion and Tory Lanez got together, got involved in some, and she ends up being shot in both feet. We'll have this. Well, first things first, join in the conversation using the hashtag Viral here on Connect. And don't forget to subscribe. Subscribe, Miss Karen. Tell a friend, call a friend, subscribe. What you do? Subscribe. All right, as we talk about Megan Thee Stallion, sex the record straight. I mean, you know, female rapper Megan Thee Stallion, who's known for hits as Hot Girl Summer, Little Big Old Freak, and now Savage. Well, Megan getting a lot of her meteoric rise to the fame and to the top. But now it's a couple of setbacks as Megan tries to recoup from an injury that dealt with Tory Lanez. And it all started with this. Right there, hip hop rapper Megan Thee Stallion saying that Tory Lanez she couldn't be mum about it, but a lot of Megs in a circle said that Tory Lanez caused her to have her foot being shot. As you can see right here, Megan coming out the car trying to ease on, trying to comply with police, and she ends up being shot in the leg by Tory Lanez as she's trying to you know comply with the police. Well. There's a whole situation going on where how this whole thing came about and Kylie Jenner's name had came up to question when they was at her house and many people were report allegedly saying that Kylie and Tory Lanez was flirting around with each other and Megan didn't like that and Megan wanted to confront Tory Lanez about flirting with Kylie Jenner. And many of you know the Kardashians have a history of flirting and stealing black men for their own financial gain. Well, let's hear from the woman herself as Megan Thee Stallion explains the whole situation in this eight minute video with this. I'm good. I really just wanted to get on here and show my face and show that I'm happy <laughs> and I'm smiling. Even though a lot of things have been, you know, things that have been making me not smile, but I'm back. So I see a lot of people painting fake ass <laughs> narratives and making up stories and all this other whack ass shit. 
but I also see a lot of people that have been like being very supportive and sending prayers and I just really appreciate that. I saw the hotties doing a lot of things like writing letters on the on Tumblr and DMing me all the time and I just want to say thank y'all so much because y'all really been the ones that have been helping me get through this. Uh, I was shot in both of my feet. I was I was shot in both of my feet and I had to get surgery to get the shit taken out, get the bullets taken out. Um, and it was super scary. Oh lord, I didn't think I was going to cry. <laughs> but yeah, I had to get surgery. It was super scary. It was like just the worst experience of my life. <laughs> and it's not funny. There's nothing to joke about. It was nothing for y'all to start going and making up fake stories about. <laughs> I didn't put my hands on nobody. I didn't deserve to get shot and do shit. Like, and thank God that the bullets didn't touch bones. They didn't break tendons. Like I know, I know my mama, my daddy, my granny had to be looking out for me with that one. Cause where the bullets hit at, it just it missed everything. But they, the motherfuckers, was in there. And it's not that I'm, I was protecting anybody. I just wasn't ready to speak. That's not no shit you just immediately get on the internet and start talking about. And that's a lot of y'all motherfucking problem. <laughs> y'all take y'all whole life to Instagram and Twitter and make it a fucking diary. And that's not, that's not me. Um... So, <laughs> fuck y'all and them fake ass blogs and y'all fake ass sources and my fake ass friends. <laughs> but on a positive note, just taking some time to myself have definitely, it has definitely made me realize how to move forward. And... You know how to protect my energy. I'm so nice. Imagine, imagine being, imagine being 25, and you don't, you don't have both of your parents. My mama was my best friend. She, you know, I'm still really not over that. So you like, you kind of try to fill like your space with a bunch of people that you think is making you happy. <laughs> Shit. Like it's a lot. Jesus. Hold on. <laughs> I just feel like I was trying to, I was moving really fast. I was moving too fast. I wasn't taking a, enough time for myself. I thought I was ready to be around a bunch of motherfuckers. I thought I was ready to be, you know, I thought I was ready to give good energy to other people and other people wasn't ready to give good energy to me. <laughs> Now 
But I definitely had to sit my ass down and pray on it. And I do feel a lot better. And thank God for the the people I have around me that are actually here for me and are actually my friends. Don't want shit from me. Would never turn on me for no amount of money, no amount of clout. That wouldn't make up stories about me to save face. That wouldn't that wouldn't go against the grain. Just thank God for them. And thank God for all the hotties and the supporters that I see have had my back through these times. And um, I ain't never seen so many grown ass motherfucking men chime in on some shit that wasn't their motherfucking business in the first motherfucking place. Like, do y'all niggas just wake up, get on the internet and be like, oh, I'm gonna say this today because this is gonna give me some like, this is gonna be funny. Like, what if your motherfucking sister got shot? Or what if your motherfucking girlfriend got shot? What if your motherfucking best friend got shot? Would you be cracking jokes then? Then you want the whole world to stop and feel sorry for you. I don't expect none of you motherfuckers to feel sorry for me, but it's just a respect thing. Like, shut the fuck up when shit don't have nothing to do with you. Stop fucking talking <laughs> when don't shit, some shit don't need to be talked about. And you out of your mind ass bitches. Are y'all? Ugh. It's not even are y'all fucking dumb. It's yes, we know you're fucking dumb. It's just how many times are you going to show me you fucking dumb? A lot of y'all silly motherfuckers just don't be having no morals or don't be having no code to stand on. But, you know, that's on y'all. And somebody gonna take care of your ass. Karma gonna take care of your ass. I ain't gotta do it. But anyway, I just want y'all to know a bitch is alive and well and strong as fuck. And, you know, I'm ready to get back to regular programming with my own hot girl shit. But I've definitely <laughs> learned that I, I don't have to be so nice to every motherfucking body. This ain't gonna stop me from being nice and this gonna, ain't gonna stop me from being making a motherfucking stallion, driving the boat, doing what the fuck I wanna do, having this good ass energy. Ain't nobody gonna stop my energy from being good. But what I can't do is keep putting my energy in you, a bunch of you motherfuckers. <laughs> so I love you hotties and I love you to everybody who has been sending me messages and sending me flowers and gifts and all kind of shit and just the texts in the morning at night throughout the day checking on me just thank y'all because i see all that shit like just thank y'all <laughs> all right i'm gonna call y'all back you can see the hurt the pain the emotion and megan stallion was she poured out her tears as she was trying to explain what happened and how she's feel at the moment and how she's doing and how she will recover from this and get stronger and get better. It's that old saying that, you know, people will try to hurt you as many reasons way possible, but only the strong will survive. Megan shown her courage, her wisdom and her strength by surviving through this and this shot pass. As Megan said, karma's a uh, you know what for people who've done her wrong. And she hopes them the best. And that's what you have to do. You have to wish them the best. Because people like that are lost and they don't know where they're going in life. And you have to pray about who they're trying to find themselves and stuff. All right. Let's see what you people, you people had to say out there about this whole Megan Thee Stallion, Tory Lanez incident. That took place, and we're gonna get your thoughts right now. It's not funny. There's nothing to joke about. It was nothing for y'all to start going and making up 
fake stories about. <laughs> I didn't put my hands on nobody. I didn't deserve to get shot in the- The most disrespected person in the human race is the black woman. To all the people making jokes and memes about Megan Thee Stallion being shot in the foot, I wanna ask who raised y'all? Megan Thee Stallion is a human being and deserves her privacy. 50 Cent issued an apology after not taking the matter seriously and making a meme. I don't understand why he wouldn't take the matter seriously. Wasn't he shot nine times? 50 Cent has always been misogynistic and homophobic but people still support him lord make it make sense I shouldn't have by what I can't stand is people questioning the fact that she got shot in the foot like she had to do something wrong to get shot in the foot I think if Tory Lanez would have got shot in the foot everybody would have been worried there's never enough compassion for the black woman the sad part of all this is is they'll forgive him like they forgave Chris Brown that's the type of society we live in just because Megan Thee Stallion is a celebrity doesn't I mean we're entitled to any of her business but I'm interested to see how this all plays out but let's ask the petty audience what they think what do y'all think about Megan Thee Stallion being shot in the feet comment below break down to you what actually happened because I've since talked to people close to Megan now what happened was Megan and Kylie were hanging out and then Tori joined them they went okay. back they went back to Kylie's house and Kylie was going to let Tori and Megan stay at her house. So she had a room for them where she was going to let them stay. Megan got sloppy, uncontrollably, have never seen this before, style drunk. This is what her mm. own people are saying. She got really, really drunk. And she saw Tori flirting with Kylie and believed Kylie was flirting back with Tori. Oh, shit. So then Kylie, they, so they got to argue and it became a really crazy argument. And Kylie asked them to leave her house. When they left the house and got in the car, the fighting ensued, the arguing ensued. Remember at the last show I said, Hey everyone, I hope all is well. It's your girl, Danielle, and welcome to Danielle Speaks. All right, so today we're gonna be looking at a video that Megan the Stallion put out after her incident with Tory Lanez. So we know that Megan the Stallion got shot twice in both her feet. She's alive and well, and like I thought in one of my previous videos, I just couldn't understand how she found herself to be hanging around. You know, like with Kylie, I don't, I don't know, but I just don't like the Kardashians' energy at all. And it always puzzled me as to why they're all hanging out together. Take a look at this one. I said that exactly. I don't understand why they're hanging out. People have seen it where um, Tory Lanez and Megan Thee Stallion was hanging around with Kylie Jenner, right? I don't, I just... I just find that kind of hanging out weird. Okay, so now that you've seen that, in Megan the Stallion's video that she put out recently, she will be telling you about that kind of energy and the people who she was hanging around with. It was it's just not her, right? So she has learned a lesson from this. Now, what I have seen, now, my problem with the video that Mega the Stallion put out is not so much a problem, but it really didn't explain why anything happened. She only addressed some of the rumors where, you know, Drea had made an insensitive joke. And then you have the No Jumper podcast who had said that, you know, Tor uh, Mega the Stallion was super violating Tory Lanez. You know what I'm saying? She was shitting on him. And that's the reason why they had that kind of um, violent altercation where she got shot. So she addressed that. She didn't do anything why she got shot. Now, I have a problem with that because nobody's just going to shoot you for no reason because you didn't do anything. It did it didn't make any sense. The only thing she said was, basically, she didn't call his name, but she got shot by Tori, which we all know, but then she's making it seem as if he done it for no reason, no apparent reason at all. It didn't make any sense to me. So I'm just waiting for the full story to come out as to why he shot her. She just has not addressed that as yet. But anyways, I wish her all the best and I can see that she looks like she's doing well. So all the best to Megan. Check out what she had to- Tory Lane's situation. 
It's all over Twitter. She just went live on Instagram, talked about what what happened, some of what happened. And I'm going to be seeing if we can kind of pull away some type of lesson from this, hopefully. But there's a, there's a lot going on here. So before we get into that, let me drop the intro. Bruce I don't need Lawrence. nothing else. Every time I'm with you, yo, it's something else. It's a fact, it's a fact, and it's nothing else. Got your hand out, you don't even need the help. Oh, I don't need nothing else. Every time I'm with you, yo, it's something else. It's a fact, it's a fact, and it's nothing else. Got your hand out, you don't even need the help. Oh, that's right. I don't need nothing else. That's right. King Street. What's going on? It's Ruslan with KingStreamENT.com. This channel exists to encourage, empower, inspire you to live God's dream for your life. So we cover all kinds of different topics, music, culture, marketing, faith, all the above. And we're going to be talking about this Megan Thee Stallion and Tory Lane situation. It's pretty, pretty crazy. She went on IG Live. We're going to be looking at a clip confirming what people were suspecting, which is that she unfortunately got shot in both of her feet she was a, a victim of gun violence which is crazy to think about and the stuff she didn't say and kind of what is the takeaway for for us for the average person from this situation and there's a very i think there's a very practical thing that we could all pull from this situation that i'll get into if you're watching this live thank you appreciate you guys for being here live get this video a thumbs up let me know where you're watching this from. Even if you're watching the replay, let me know where you're watching this from. Always, always helpful. And I got to shout out the most talented community on the internet, the King's Dream Patreon community. The most talented artist you'll ever hear of. Maybe they'll even call in tonight. We'll see. Uh, we'll see if we get some call-ins tonight from the Patreon community. But, man, crazy times. Again, my name is Ruslan. I'm a hip-hop artist, creative entrepreneur. Uh, you guys could follow me on you know, Instagram and all the socials. Yeah, do that. If you want to do that, you don't got to do that. But listen, we're going to get into this situation. I think, uh, I think this is, this is very telling in terms of where we are in society where there's just a lot, there's just a lot going on. You know what I'm saying? So before we get into all that, let me just pull up this clip from Megan the Stallion. I'm going to play you guys the clip that came out and then we'll, uh, We'll kind of we'll kind of pick pick apart the lesson I think for for us here. So let's get into it here. This just this just went viral. She just went live. It's all over Twitter. Here we go. I was I was shot in both of my feet, and I had to get surgery to get the shit taken out, get the bullets taken out. Um, and it was super scary. So she confirms what the news had broken earlier that she had got shot in both feet. It's a couple weeks ago, she was hanging out with Tory Lanez. He got arrested for a drug, uh, not a, a drug, a gun possession. And she was the victim of gun violence. She had said this earlier. She went on live and actually talked about it. And this is, this is, you know, so she's confirming it, basically. Oh, Lord, I didn't think I was going to cry. <laughs> but, yeah, I had to get surgery. It was super scary. It was, like, just the worst experience of my life. <laughs> and it's not funny. Gun violence is definitely not funny, right? That goes without saying. So listen, situation, they're at a party. Allegedly, the ru the rumor was allegedly Tory Lanez was the one who shot her. Tory Lanez, very talented artist from Toronto, Canada. Megan Thee Stallion, talented artist. I forgot where she's from. I feel like she's from Houston. Yeah, she's from, she's from the Houston area. Both, you know, uh, up and coming, emerging. Uh, she's 25. I believe Tory Lanez is in his 30s. Bit of an age gap there. And listen, I don't, I, I make it a point not to critique people and judge people on this channel. I do my best. I try to critique ideas, not people, because I think people, we're all fallible and we all make mistakes and we're all, you know, we're all sinners. So it goes without saying. But. This situation is very interesting, and the verse that comes to mind is obviously Paul in the New Testament. 
He talks about bad company corrupts good character. Now, we all know this, right? We, we've all heard this. I think that's very common. But I think there's something more here. This is, this is what I want us to think about, right? Uh, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, a lot of us would... Okay, Th Tory Lanez is 28. Thank you for, uh, for sharing that. 15, 20 years ago, the internet has brought a lot of us together, right? It's brought a lot of us together. It's brought a lot of people closer because the advancement of technology, people are now connected via the iPhone. In the same way, Megan Thee Stallion's success uh, and Tory Lanez's success has brought them together. It, it, it brought them closer together. And again, think about it. She's from Houston. He's from t Toronto usually the, these people wouldn't have crossed paths, right? A hundred years ago, these two would have never crossed paths. 50 years ago, these people wouldn't, you know, these two wouldn't have crossed paths. But for whatever reason, uh, you know, they did cross paths. And again, she, the, the interesting part is that she did not tell or confirm what everybody else is saying, at least not in that clip or the other clip that I saw. She did not say that Tory Lanez was the one who shot her. She says I was a victim of gun violence, which is tragic and uh, and, and I think that's very telling for her being a female and not, I guess, snitching. I don't know what it is, right? But she didn't She didn't say that. Maybe she's just trying to, you know, he has a case on it now and she's trying to be care cautious, careful. Maybe she still cares about him. I don't know what it does. But I think one that's very telling that she did not confirm the other side of it, which was that Troy Lane's famous rapper was the one who, you know, shot her. That's really interesting to me. Allegedly. We don't know. Both of these guys, uh, both of these folks are young, talented, ridiculously talented, very, very up and coming. Uh, not, not, not up and coming, they're on and they're popping and they're dope. And, you know, you can't deny Tory Lanez's verse on the uh, What's Poppin' remix, one of the dopest verses I've heard. So we don't want to diminish their talent and their ability. They're amazing. But, uh, and, and this isn't even to, to, to blame anybody and be like, oh, it's anybody's fault because we don't know what happened. But here's the, here's the takeaway. 100 years ago, 50 years ago, these two would have never met. They would have never connected like this, right? And it's because they're both highly successful that they have access to more people. And we, on a, on a different level, have access to more people. We have access to excess. And this verse came to mind, and maybe, maybe this is a stretch, uh, and I was I, I read the I read the proverbs every day. If you guys follow me on TikTok, you guys know I read the proverbs every day. This is a very interesting. This is a very interesting uh, verse. Proverbs twenty twenty one. It says, "An inheritance obtained too early in life is not a blessing in the end. An inheritance obtained too early in life is not a blessing in the end." What does that mean? Okay, so this is talking about literal inheritance, right? This is talking about prodigal son. Hopefully, you guys are familiar with the story of the prodigal son. Prodigal son you know, wants his inheritance before his father even dies, right? Which is very, like, awful. And he gets his inher inheritance early, and what happens? He blows it, right? And this is saying an inheritance obtained too early in life is not a blessing in the end. What does this mean? Well, the statistics say that people who earn the, the lion's share of their lifetime income in their 20s usually end up very messed up by their 40s and 50s. This is true for entertainers. This is true for athletes, people who win the lottery. Money too early in life will ruin you. It just is what it is. Unless you're trained to handle money, unless you're trained to handle success, unless you're trained to handle uh, fame. And no one really is trained to handle fame at this level, right? So especially in Megan Thee Stallion's case, and she's lost her mother, she's lost her father. This is somebody who you know, doesn't have both of her parents in her life. And you have Tory Lanez who, you know, he, 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 he's, he's, he's kind of got the little man syndrome going on. He's, he's always popping off and doing his thing. And, you know, he almost got into a fight with Travis Scott over like a misunderstanding about a feature. There's a video of it. This is a lot of like tension in him for whatever reason, you know. Napoleon complex is what some people will call it. I don't know. In, fact, in the middle of this, they came to find out that he was only five foot three, buck twenty. Everybody's like, "Oh, that's why he's acting crazy." I don't know. I don't know that dude. I know he's super talented. I know he's super dope. But an inheritance obtained too early in life is not a blessing in the end. What does that mean for us? What does that mean for us? Well, this is what it means. One, we we need to not like look at celebrities and look at people who are highly successful and envy them and think that their life is perfect. Because clearly in a situation like this, it's not, right? You have one person who's young, Tory Lanez is 28, potentially going to jail with a gun charge, right? You have another person 
who is now the victim of gun violence, right? Shot in both of her feet. She had to get multiple surgeries. Both young, young, amazingly talented kids. And I, and I say kids because, I mean, they're in their 20s. I didn't know anything when I was 25. Like, <laughs> I was an idiot at 25, 28, right? And it's not to diminish and, and look down on anybody that's young, but it's to say this. Listen, most of us are not equipped to handle wealth, money, success, and notoriety at a young age. And we want these things. We aspire for these things. And we, we think that, especially if we're artists and creatives, we think that we're entitled to them to an extent. But seldom does this end well. Seldom does somebody becoming freakishly successful in their early 20s, holding on, uh, making the lion's share of their life income in their early 20s, seldom do they end up successful on the back end. And so this verse, I think, is echoing a, a true statistic about society. An inheritance obtained too early in life is not a blessing in the end. Proverbs 20, 21. Now, wh how does this apply to us? What, is this, what, is this, uh, what does this really mean for the average person? Well, one, don't be in a hurry to get rich, right? Don't be in a hurry to get rich. Understand what building wealth is. Understand that it's more of a long-term process, making your money work for you. And it's also the process of acquiring skills to know to be an asset, to be someone that has a scarce specific skill set. So one, don't be in a hurry to get rich. Two, know that it's it's a long-term game, right? Nipsey said it's a marathon. So one, we got to know that. Two, we also have to understand that, again, this isn't so much about them, but that we can have microcosms of this. What this is really, right, is, and, it, it, and it, it, odd thing is it's in the middle of COVID, right? It's in the middle of COVID, which you would think that in the middle of all this, we would be more restrained and not just out at parties and doing whatever. But again, Harrison's obtained too early in life is not a blessing in the end. You have people who have access to excess. This is, the access to excess is really the 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 kryptonite to all of us having too much access to maybe the wrong type of people bad company corrupts good character maybe too much access to wealth too much access to power to come and go as you please too much access to people that you normally wouldn't have access through social media channels if you're lonely now you now now there's a you know apps out there tinder and whatever that you can connect and hook up with people very easily too much access to excess opens up these doors to while out and make costly mistakes, to make really costly mistakes. And I'll take it a step further. Too much access to excess could even be having too many options with what you can do with your leisure time, having too many options on what you can eat and when you can eat. Remember, we haven't lived like this historically. Like, Historically, this is all new. This is this is all a big social experiment that we're encountering. One, just how much access we have to people and food and how densely populated a lot of cities are. Two, how much access we have to technology, how much access we have to people we would normally never cross paths with. Think about 50 years ago. You wouldn't cross paths with people from other countries and this person from Houston is hanging out with this person from Toronto. The dynamics there. And so I think, in my opinion, this whole situation, and again, we don't know the details, and, and I'm not going to sit here and demonize any of these people because I don't know them, but it seems like th this is a microcosm of where we really are as a society where we just have too much access to excess, and we envy people who get rich early, not understanding that an inheritance of something too early in life is not a blessing in the end. Slow and steady, the tortoise, not the hare right um you 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 want to you want to go after the long term play you want the long term play in uh the your career you want the long term play with how you build wealth you want the long term play with the type of marriage and spouse you have right um you want the long term play and so why are these things happening it just happens at scale right if you're a rapper and you have infinite access to money and people and power your stuff is going to happen at a mass scale, right? It's going to happen with this type of situations where you're out at a party and someone ends up getting shot and it's just like, oh my gosh, this is like, and God, God, praise God, it, it wasn't worse. Like she could have not been here. Like this could have been way worse. You know what I mean? He could have hit an artery, bad, right? But 
this this is a this is a reflection and should be a time of reflection for all of our own hearts. What what are you doing right now that you shouldn't be doing? You know you shouldn't be doing because you have too much access to excess. What is it? What is that thing? Is it is it that connection and that soul tie to that person over Instagram or worse over Tinder? Is it is it having too much access to food and you know you're binging and you're eating stuff you shouldn't eat? Are you looking at porn? What are those things that you are indulging in knowing you shouldn't be doing it because you we we're freaking rich, man. We're we're rich. If we're talking about globally, if we're talking about globally, people who are in North America, specifically America and Canada, which is the majority of you guys watching it, are in the top 1% of the world's wealth. Think about that for a second. We're in the top 1%. If your household gener- your household brings in more than 50,000 a year, which is the average household in America, you are in the 1% of the world's wealth. So, we're all we're all a ton of access to excess. How are we going to guide that? How are we going to guard our own hearts? How are we going to be careful so that we don't end up in a situation? Maybe we're, you know, somebody's shot and it's, it's all crazy and it's all over Twitter and it's trending. But in our own lives, in our own hearts, right? With, with the stuff we're looking at, the stuff we're listening, the stuff we're consuming, how we spend our time, all these different things, I think we have to really take a self-analysis uh, because it really is, it's, it's, a, it's a form of pride, it's a form of lack of self-control and lack of discipline, and then it just spews over, and you never, you never mean to, you never mean to end up in these, like, I don't think Megan Thee Stallion and Tory Lanez was meaning to end up in these situations, but neither, neither, neither does anybody wake up and mean to become obese, and nobody, nobody wakes up and mean to become in debt, mean to waste their time, right? These things just kind of happen and they sneak in so subtly, man. So, what y'all think, man? I don't know. I don't know. I, I think, I think to me, when I look at these situations, I'm more evaluating my own heart and less judging uh, the, these people. You know what I'm saying? Because I think they are, uh, they're a reflection. You know, celebrities are just a, a, they're just a reflection of what's happening to all of us right now. And... We're locked down. We can't come and go as we please. And then we, you know, we, we do dumb stuff. You know, we do dumb stuff. And it's a bummer. You know what I mean? It's a bummer. So anyway, let me know what y'all think, man. Leave a comment if you would. Like this video. Those help a ton. And I appreciate y'all, man. Maybe I'll be back later on tonight. We'll see. Peace. Child, they claiming that Tory Lane shot Megan the Stallion. Yes, baby, okay? Let me tell you who they is, all right? Because I got some good receipts today. Page six. Complex, XXL Magazine, child, even TMZ is saying it, okay? Listen, I'm gonna read you what's it, what's in page six, all right? And click like and click share and start commenting below, baby. I need to hear what y'all got to say. And if you got more news, comment below with that and tag me. Tag the source on there too, okay? Listen, Tory Lanez, whose real name is Daystar Peterson, was the person who allegedly shot Megan the Stallion following a dispute inside his vehicle Sunday morning. Page six has learned there was a dispute inside the vehicle. Let's go ahead. Let's talk further. OK, now here's a quote. Tory fired the shots from within the vehicle while Megan was outside trying to leave. So she was trying to get away and he shot her in the foot. He was trying to keep her from. Um, I don't even know, honey. I'm just reading. Oh, my God. It's too much. This is what a source exclusively told page six on Thursday. So I guess that's today. Now, here's another quote. There is video and, and the police are investigating. This is a case of a man physically harming and abusing a woman. Honey, is Megan in an abusive relationship with Tory Lanez? Is this another Chris Brown, Rihanna situation? Situation. It sounds very similar, honey. The two young people out here in the streets of LA, and next thing you know, violence, violence occurs, and, and you have superstars in the hospital, people being arrested. I don't know what's going on. Comment below. Do you think that Tori really was the person who shot her? Do you think that this was that, that he was trying to harm her? Do you what do you think, honey? Do you think Kylie knows anything? They keep saying she was there. I have no idea. Baby, I'm gonna tell you this right now. This sounds like a case of self-sabotage, okay? I'm gonna tell you, you gotta be very careful with this, okay? Okay? When life is trying to bring you higher, you got to be very careful because they say, honey, the, the devil goes into overdrive at that point in time to try to pull you down, baby. Okay, because I'm going to say this right now. What's her name? Megan Thee Stallion. 
You, how you go from just a month or two ago, you got singles coming out with Beyonce, to now you getting shot, baby. How does that work, baby? I'm going to tell you how it works, okay? When we become accustomed to a certain way of living, operating at a certain vibration, and life tries to bring us better, we've got to be very conscious that we don't make choices that keep us within that old way. Because here's the thing. We can self, we can subconsciously um, self-sabotage the good that's trying to happen in our life because we are so comfortable within our old muck and mire that we keep on making choices that'll keep us pulled back into that. I wonder what this is, honey, and I wonder if this is the case for Megan here, okay? Because the reality is this. One would ask himself, if you are a megastar and you got the other, the biggest stars in the world tapping your shoulder saying, I want to work with you, I want to be associated with you, why on earth are you hanging out with some man who's carrying around guns? Why are you sitting up here in an alleged abusive relationship, baby? How you, how, how does it get to this point, darling, okay? But here's the thing I always say, it's not just about the stars that I'm talking about. This is all about you. We are using their lives as a classroom for you, for you to look at your own choices, okay? And the choices I want you to think about is what choices have you been making within your life that could be indirectly self-sabotaging the good that you're trying to attract into your life. Again, I hope that this is a wake-up call for Megan, but even if it's not, let it be a wake-up call for you, baby. Ask yourself, are the choices that I'm making today building the tomorrow that I know that I desire and deserve? If the answer is no, no, then you need to start making different choices. You need to clear anyone out of your life who's a blockage towards the kind of life that you want to live. You need to invite in anyone into your life who you know can help you to get to that next level, baby. And you need to protect your peace and protect your energy with a vengeance, honey. You need to protect it without, without, with, without, without relenting in any way, shape, or form, baby, because you deserve the desires of your heart. So, Megan, darling, again, I hope that you see this as a wake-up call. And y'all, keep on tagging me on the news, baby. Let me know what's going on. I just want to share with you all. I, I, I'm, I, I'm, I, I just want to let you all know what's going on darling so if you let me know i'll let you know mm, bye best friends and megan i'm praying for you okay so i just noticed that drea michelle is trending on twitter if you don't know who drea is she's from basketball wives a show where coincidentally most of them are not basketball wives or even wives but that's okay because Mission Impossible is actually about the mission always being possible. So, Dre was on his podcast called Wine and Weed. I know. When asked about Megan Thee Stallion being shot by Tory Lanez, she was like, they got that Whitney and Bobby type of love. I want him to love me so much that he shoots me in my foot. To which all of the SVU and Snapped victims were like, yeah, no. That's going to be a no for us, sis. To be fair. If ever you appear on a wine and weed podcast, the chances that you're going to say something not smart grows exponentially. When this news made it to the internet, Drea lost her Fenty sponsorship. And everybody was like, yes, yeah, sis. How you going to say that Rihanna was a victim of domestic violence? You're not thinking. That's like saying you hate Texas, you hate the color blue, and you hate the number four and expect Beyonce to cut you a check. The dough ain't rising in that bread, sis. Now, I <laughs> still don't know if rapper Tory Lanez actually shot Megan Thee Stallion in her foot. Honestly, I don't know who Tory Lanez is. But what I do know is that whenever asked about domestic violence, your answer should be the same. Domestic violence is wrong. Yeah, but he loved her. Domestic violence is wrong, but she provoked him. Domestic violence is wrong, but it was over Kylie Jenner, I heard. Domestic violence is wrong, but they still together. Domestic violence is wrong. Okay, well, how about you have some wine and some weed and we'll continue to talk about it. Domestic violence is wrong. I'm not worried about Drea. I know it is really hard to lose a sponsorship, especially in the time of COVID. But just like her waist after she had them babies, she'll snap back. You saw that segment, what the people say, as we got your thoughts about what you people saying, a lot of you favoring Megan and Tory Lanez. Like even some people want Tory Lanez to be deported back to um, Canada, where he's from. Let's see if that goes down anytime soon. Well, it was more backlash as supermodel Drea Michelle. You may not know from her. She's one of the dance we did it and did it was um, beaming and he got his full attention. But well, Drea made some controversial remarks regarding Megan and Tory Lanez with this.
I think. No, no, nope, already fucking up. Okay. No, no. <laughs> I'm protecting you. I predict. I'll take it. <laughs> I predict that they had some sort of Bobby and Whitney love that, you know, drove them down this snapped esque mm. type of road. And mm. I'm here for it. I like that. I want you to like me so much you shoot me in the foot too. Like But as long as <laughs> What the whoa uh, Wait, no, no, that, I, 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 that is very Dre like drop man. a grenade. <laughs> What the, you want you what? I want you to like me so much that if I'm trying to get out the car and you're like, no, sit your fucking ass she in the repeats. car. And she I'm like, repeats. no, nigga, I'm fucking getting out the car. No, you're not. He shoots you in the foot. Wow. Yeah, yeah. You going to fuck and, that and nigga. No, I'm not going in nowhere. In this moment, are you gonna Drea just went viral. Guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, and look, and she's looking like, okay, like, okay. So we're there, Drea. Saying some controversial stuff about Megan and Tori had a Whitney Bobby moment. What the world? She... But little do she know that she got Ken by Rihanna, and Rihanna's looking out for Megan and supports Megan. And good job by Rihanna. She was working for Rihanna, and now she's talking bad about Megan and Stallion about her relationship. That's what her budding romance. It's on her. Well. We hope Megan Thee Stallion recovers and get back to what she does best, being a emerging rapper. All right. I've been your host, Kendrick Dick, saying so long as we talk about Megan Thee Stallion, set the record straight here on Vow.